You're listening to the You Mentor Talk Show. I'm your host, Fatima Al Sayed. On this weekly talk show, we invite experts to learn about their professions and the fields of work that they're in. Um, if you have any questions, please make sure to leave uh, any questions you have in the comments section or just ask through our Inspire platform. Um, Inspire is there to help um, our youth with any questions that we uh, they ha may have. And we have mentors on there who um, our youth can also reach out to. So make sure to check out the Inspire platform on the Emoja. Um, on today's show, we welcome Zainab Zreik. Uh, she combines the love of teaching with the satisfaction of organizing aesthetics and baking. Um, it's very interesting. Uh, her love for teaching has been with her since she was very young. Um, and she's always known what she wanted to do, which is something very rare. But the way that she pulls everything, all of her passions together um, is what's interesting about her story. So um, I'm going to welcome Zainab. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. How are you? Good. How are you? Um, Zainab is currently in her classroom uh, and the setup is going to be looking at her computer to see us and the cameras on her side. So um, I'm going to get you this way. Yes. <laughs> so she's not looking away from us. Um, she's actually looking towards us. Um, so Zainab, can you tell us a bit about um, what inspired you to get into teaching um, when you were young? Um, so I actually have a full story, a backstory on how and why this all happened. Um, ever since I was a child, I knew I wanted to become a teacher. Something about it always made me love the idea of having my own class. I never once doubted it or thought of another career. Um, I, I did it for a long time at home. I remember being super young and my dad bringing in this huge whiteboard for me. Um, so I can play school and teach my students, which at the time were my brothers. Um, clearly, they were having as much fun as I was. So they eventually ditched me. And, um, you know, I, I was teaching solo for a while at home, but <laughs> that's how you start. Um, but as I grew older, dealing with my own experiences at school, um, I just, it made more sense to me that this is what I needed to do. This is what I wanted to do. Um, it, growing up, I felt like I was never really understood at school. And even at times right now, I think to myself, is it me or why is this person not getting it the same way I do? Yeah. Um, I vividly remember times at school where I would be sitting on my desk and while the teacher was talking, all I can hear is background noise. I would try to concentrate. I would be telling my mind to stop thinking, to stop working, to just stop because I need to concentrate. And I would almost force myself to try to listen to a lesson, but mm -hmm. it never worked for me because what was going on in my head was far more interesting. And there was a lot going on. Um, I, I just needed to concentrate and at the time, a failure was never really an option for me. I, until this day, I feel like I always have to remind myself that it's okay and it's okay to fail and it's okay not to be perfect. Um, it's okay to make a mistake. And throughout the years, I've gotten much better at embracing those mistakes, um, taking them with a grain of salt and acknowledging and learning from them. Um, at the time, I, I felt like there's no way it wasn't an option. I felt like I needed to, I needed to be the best. I needed to be perfect. Um, I, I just, I needed to, I needed to just be perfect. Mm. Um, and I needed to have the best grades. So I, I was also always the youngest in my class because of my birthday. <laughs> So you can imagine with all that going on and the way I my schooling was and my experience, it was it was a different experience. It was almost like a struggle. Um, and I fought myself, I fought my mind to get those A's, um, that perfect grade that I I pushed myself to get. Um, 
And it was a different experience that my brothers had in school. And growing up, I never understood why. Um, I never understood why it took me, I had to like go through so many obstacles to get it. Um, to me, this was my norm, but I didn't understand why others weren't experiencing it the same way I was. I just had a different way of thinking. My mm-hmm. mind would constantly go far into thoughts, ideas, and like the tiniest details. Um, my imagination was wild, and I always felt like my mind was working, constantly working. Um, when I would be in school, I would see and think of the information given to me from everything around it, from the world around it. Um, my mind would be gener- generating these, like a total different perspective of it. And I would always find myself relating everything that I was learning through experiences and existing knowledge okay. um, to be able to create something in my mind. Um, that's how I retained the information. I was able to correlate things and then that's how I learned. Mm -hmm. I needed to visualize, I needed to imagine, um, I needed to create. Were you, uh, sorry, were you often characterized as like the daydreamer or the one who wouldn't, uh, you know, always finish the work on time or within the given time frame? You know, I, not many people notice this because uh, going back to why I, I tried to be so perfect Mm -hmm. that I would struggle and I would hide that. So mm-hmm. I would fight myself, so I wouldn't daydream. There was no way I had to be the perfect student. So mm-hmm. I would daydream. I would, you know, shove it all back in there and try to understand it. So in my head, I'm following along, but so something totally different is happening in my mind. I'm okay. creating something to like existing knowledge and, and making something out of it. So my personal experience um, just inspired me to be the teacher I am today, to yeah. get into teaching, and I just became the teacher that I needed. So your teaching style, from what I gather, is more of a uh, visual learning teaching style, correct? Yes, so I, it's visual, but I'm also um, going for every approach that a child needs. Mm-hmm. So I'm making sure um, that every child gets a fair opportunity to succeed. Mm-hmm. And that's a very difficult task to do, right? Because we all learn in such different ways. You can't really categorize it, um, you know, and make specific. I mean, lessons have to be created in such a way that it just is able to work with all students. Um, yeah. That's why teaching is such a, you know, underrated profession. Yeah. So I I went into this. I believing just because of my own experiences, I knew that I every child is unique. Every mm-hmm. child has the potential to be great and every child is intelligent in their own way yeah. um, they just deserve a fair opportunity to explore their capabilities and within their own learning style and fair in teaching i don't mean fair as in they every child will get the same exact thing fair mm-hmm. in education is every child getting what they need in order to be able to bloom and flourish and succeed um, so I wanted to make sure I give all the children a fair opportunity to to do that. So um, I take time out of each lesson um, to make sure I'm reaching every child's unique learning style. Mm-hmm. My weekly lesson plans are structured in a way where by the end of the week, we've worked on the same lesson in so many different ways where it almost becomes a routine for the kids. They don't do mm-hmm. much of it. They don't. Um, all they know is that today is Monday's work, Tuesday's work, Wednesday's work, but they don't feel or see differentiation going on. They don't think anything of it. Everyone's doing the work together. So when we're reading and writing on Tuesdays, um, those kids who learn by reading, by writing, by asking questions, they're getting it. Those who don't learn that way are still getting the practice they need, but that very next day when we do centered, they're learning by visualizing, by doing it, by seeing it. So um, by the end of the week, every child will get it. 
and it just it takes practice on a daily basis and they all have the fair opportunity to get it. You just have to incorporate um, topics that interest them that I wish I had growing up or a little learning style that they do. You'll find me even right now, if let's say I'm in a university course, you will still find me if I need to concentrate and if I'll probably grab a piece of paper and I need to draw something, I need to write something. I, I actually practice calligraphy through my college courses because all you would see me do is probably write my name over and over again because for some reason in my mind, when a lecture was going on and I was out, that was making me, I was like forcing myself, no, I need to listen. That was all I need to do so. So, yeah. That's so interesting. I love that you um, incorporate all of these uh, different things because of your experience. Um, it really, you know, uh, shows how much we can do, you know, instead of just staying with the rigid education system. Um, you also have a big passion for creating. Um, you're a baker. Um, you are also, <laughs> I think you, you mentioned that you draw as well, um, which is really cute. So can you tell us a bit about um, your baking and how that goes hand in hand with your education? So I think it all goes together. I think everything I um, do in life, for some reason, it all goes back to creating. Um, as I got older, I understood the why I used to ask when I was younger. Um, I understood that my mind is just it's working differently than others. And I, I'm making things in my mind. I'm creating things in my mind. Um, so I, I would just, I would constantly need to create something and, and it just, I knew that that's what I wanted to do because after so many years, I was thinking um, why and how I, finally came to terms that I'm just thinking in my own creative bubble space, yeah. that this is my unique mind. Um, I learned by visualizing, I learned by doing, because that's all my mind ever did. Um, so with all those thoughts and ideas being created in my mind, I, I knew at such a young age that I wanted to create. Um, and that's what I did. I grew up to create. Um, and it began when my sister was very young, um, and we would throw these extravagant birthday parties for her. <laughs> At the time, I was like 12, 13, 14, and I was picking colors for her birthday, uh, picking a theme, and putting ideas together of how I wanted this birthday, um, games that we wanted to play for the birthday, and picking her outfit, and then it even went down to designing the cake. And every year, um, I would design this cake that I would be so proud of, and my mom would take it to local cake shops. And for some reason, it would never turn out the way I drew it. It would never turn out the way I wanted it to. And I, again, never understood why. Um, so by the fourth or fifth year birthday party, I said, you know what? I'm going to make the cake this year. Mm. And I've been baking around the house here and there and doing things. But I one night I just went to Joanne Fabrics with my mom and we got all the cake supplies. And my only experience, I guess, was watching cake pots growing up. I absolutely loved it. So I just at 15, I made my first three-tiered fondue cake. Oh wow. <laughs> Cool. I, it, it brought me so much joy seeing the ability to bring my imagination to life. Mm -hmm. Like how I, could, I actually did that. I can actually do that. Um, so from then on, I made an Instagram account and I began making cake. What's um, your Instagram page so we can pull it up on the screen? The Zre underscore. It, it went through many names, but eventually there were so many things I was doing at once. I didn't really know how to <laughs> name it. We have to add one more scene here. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, so after cakes, though, as I previously said, your mind doesn't stop working. I I always felt like I can do more. I wanted to do more. You always want to achieve more. Um, you always want to be the best version of yourself. Yeah. So I then began dessert tables together. 
um, which led me to push myself even more and put backdrops together, um, take on full events, um, and so much more. So at one point, I would have so much on my plate, but I wanted to do more. I kept doing more, and I absolutely loved it. I became that person with friends and family that would help with house decor and colors and aesthetics, organizing. And even right now, I, I'll teach Monday through Friday a whole day with 14 amazing kids. Um, but I'll go home and you'll still find my I'll still find myself working on some odd project because it's a norm for me. <laughs> Um, can you tell us about your educational journey? Um, you yeah. didn't study anything that has to do with baking. No. Um, but yeah, I'll leave it. So I graduated Dearborn High School from um, in 2014. I went to Henry Ford for two years and then eventually transferred to U of M Dearborn mm -hmm. um, to get my bachelor's in education. Um, I majored in science, which goes back to my love for creating and projects, and I minored in math. Mm -hmm. um, being frankly honest with you, my experience was still um, really, really rough because, mm -hmm. again, now we're at college courses and here we go again with the lectures and I, I would get frustrated. Um, so I really, at times, some courses, uh, you would find my, you would find me drawing or doing something to really get it, get into it. And then there were times within, um, the education program where you need to take practicums or, um, science, uh, science classes where you're doing hands-on things. Yeah. Um, for example, the practicums, we have, I forgot the exact amount, but we have a couple, few um 45 hour practicums where you're assigned to a class in a local well not really locally a school nearby but mm -hmm. usually aim for diversity so they stick you in places where you're not really that familiar with mm -hmm. um and you know you get to experience all of them you get to actually experience time with the kids in a class mm -hmm. um which then that leads up to a student teaching course, which is right before you graduate. It's a full semester. Um, so by the end, you really have a good experience of what it's like to be in a classroom, what it's like to um, take everything on. But I always say something, and I always tell everyone around me that it's not until you step into your own classroom for the first time, taking in all the responsibility, the tasks, and all of those little details that no one really tells you about is when you really get your full experience. Um, and you only continue learning and growing from there. And that's when you learn the dynamic of teaching and um, you kind of get the hang of your own teaching style. Um, something that uh, I want to bring up is you're actually at an Islamic school. When you did your practicums, they were not in Islamic school. So how was that shift and change? And um, how has Islam really shaped your journey? Oh, um, I absolutely love love it here. I'm, I'm so honored I can do everything I do here at Great Evolutions Academy, I, an Islamic private school. Um, because as an educator, my goal is not only to teach the curriculum, um, it's, it's coming in every morning, no matter how I'm feeling, no matter what's going on in my personal life, coming in and trying to inspire confidence and hope in each child, um, allowing for a safe space, a calming environment, and a love for learning. So here, I feel like I'm able to ignite that beautiful imagination embedded within each child um, while giving them the opportunity to strive for greatness. Mm -hmm. Also, while being able to inspire the faith, our, our beautiful faith and religion with Islamic integration in all subjects because it's the beauty of our faith it's Allah who created everything and Allah who made it all make sense to us um so at that point once they get that once everything that's all settled in 
I truly believe that's when I can teach the curriculum and that's when they begin learning. Mm -hmm. So I absolutely love it here. I love the environment. I love walking in every morning and feeling the safe space that we're all in and teaching them that. That's amazing. Um, I had another question uh, come up right now. So when you, when I think about everything that you do, um, how do you have a work-life balance? <laughs> you know, like between baking um, and creating and teaching, you know, teaching, you have to, you have so much prep to do, especially when you go with the teach, teaching style that you're going with, right? Yes. Um, you know, I love it. All I can say is I love doing what I do. I love waking up every morning and doing everything I do. And I think it became my life. Everything mm -hmm. became my life. And that's why I'm able to balance it because I don't consider it a job. I don't consider anything I do a job because I'm almost voluntarily doing this. When I leave here and I have lessons to continue or I need to finish working on um, a craft I have to get together, I'm still at home working on other projects because I just, I, I, I need to. Yeah. So I just find it all balancing out on a daily basis. So it, it's just magical for you then. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, can you tell me what the highlight of your year um, was this year? You know, sorry, um, with a student, with uh, a lesson you taught or something that made you think, you know, this is why I do this. Um, I mean, every moment I get to witness these little minds growing and expanding um, and their laughter and the fun, just it does it for me. But I think going back to what we talked about and making that difference, um, I think the highlight would be actually, I think this would always be the highlight of um, my teaching career would be this one note I got um, last my first year of teaching. Mm -hmm. And I save, I actually have a folder. I save everything these kids give me. Um, and there's many things in here that they make. That's so cute. Um, but it would have to be this note because my whole purpose, it brought tears to my eyes that this is why I got into teaching and this is why I do it. Um, she said a bunch of things. But then she pointed out, um, I appreciate all the things you do for us. I am so thankful for all the things, and I bet all my classmates are thankful too. I never liked math, but I kind of like math when you teach it. So I hope you like the gift I got you because, well, I know you're a good teacher. And it meant so much to me because it's not that she didn't like math. I think she just never understood it the way she was taught. Mm -hmm. So it made me so happy to know that, you know, something was working. And every single day um, that I teach, if I if one child is able to grow, that's more than I can ask for. So, that's so beautiful because it kind of went for full circle for you. You know, you were that little girl and you can put yourself in her shoes. Yeah. Um, and you were there not liking math because it was difficult to understand. So it's so beautiful that it shows you that you've accomplished that goal. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Um, and can you tell me a little bit about um, how teaching is a recipe for kids? I know you said that during our pre-interview, and I really love that kind of like um, <laughs> metaphor. Um, teaching is it just, I don't know, I, I somehow correlate everything with everything I, I work with. So with recipes and baking, yeah. I, I just felt like, every day practicing, um, working with these kids, um, acknowledging their weaknesses and everything in their growth and working with them on a daily basis and being able to know what they need. Um, eventually just hand in hand, it, it comes together and mm -hmm. we begin learning. The outcome is unbelievably amazing. That's amazing. That's so beautiful. Um, is there anything you want to bring up before we come? We have five minutes left of our show. Um, so I wanted to know if there's any uh, stories or something day to day that you wanted to um, tell us about, or maybe um, a piece of advice you wish someone would have told you before you got into this career. Oh, okay. So 
Um, I mean, with teaching, I often hear people getting into it and not realizing the amount of work that comes into it. Mm -hmm. I think um, I never personally underestimated the work. I know teachers are moving and I always knew that there is the work that comes along with it. You just have to have a passion for it. Mm -hmm. But it's um, something I guess I wish somebody told me was to reaffirm that it's okay to let go. Mm -hmm. It's okay to let go, let those little things go. Uh, we sometimes get so caught up in lessons and thinking there isn't enough time, there isn't enough material covered, and mm -hmm. sit there and develop an amazing lesson, um, creating an engaging assignment or activity and centered, and then providing um, deep assessments for it. Mm -hmm. Just like that, a teacher moment. Um, you find yourself needing to take a whole different approach. You need to start all over and you need to reteach something and that's okay. Um, I learned that that's okay. It's okay to let go and that's how I learn. That's how I grow and that's how I'm able to give them the opportunity to learn and grow. Um, and all in all, you know, I they come in here every morning thinking, that I'm teaching them something. Yeah. At the end of the day, I walk out of this classroom every single day learning something new from every one of those amazing, beautiful children. And I, I love them. That's so beautiful. Uh, speaking of kids, I can hear my son hysterically crying downstairs. So <laughs> um, unfortunately, um, we're going to have to come to the end of our show a little earlier this time. But thank you so much, Zaina, for sharing your journey and sharing your career and sharing your passion. You know, um, you've shared so much with us today and um, I'm inspired. I want to become a teacher now. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Um, do you have any final piece of advice for our listeners before we end? Um, I think I think that's all. Thank you, Zaina. Thanks for having me. You were just listening to the Umentor Talk Show. If you miss this or future shows, you can always hear the replay on the Umentor website under prior talk shows. Thank you for, so much for listening to our show today.